Hi, my name is Peter Inglemeyer, so thank you for taking some time today to listen about my career and hear what I do for a living. So I work for the Minnesota Department of Transportation, so MnDOT for short, um, as a civil engineer. So when I say civil engineer, that's a fairly broad statement um, because there are all sorts of different civil engineers or different types of civil engineers. So for example, there's structural engineers who design buildings, bridges, skyscrapers, um, very large uh, structures. There's water resources engineers who deal with water, hydraulics, um, design culverts, storm sewer systems. There's environmental engineers, and then myself, I'm a transportation engineer. So I design roadways, utilities, signals. Um, a good way to describe what I do is imagine when you're just driving down a roadway or when your parents are driving down a roadway and you're in, the, in a vehicle and all of the lanes, the sidewalk, trails, signing, um, lighting, all that sort of stuff is what I do for my career and I design. Um, so MnDOT has eight different districts throughout the state, and each district encompasses a different geographic area. Um, so myself, I work for District 7, which is out of the Mankato office. Um, so I focus on state highways in southwestern Minnesota, so essentially from Mankato south to the Iowa border and then west to the South Dakota border. A couple benefits of my job is one thing I really like is that it's flexible because some days I'm in the office doing design work in front of a computer. Some days are very people oriented so I have a lot of meetings or interactions with people. And then some days I'm out on a construction site so I get a, able to go to outside um, and see things that I've designed actually be constructed and put together which is a very rewarding thing because um, it's fun to be able to, to design something and then see it actually come to life and see other people use it. Um, so it's always interesting with something different. Um, another thing with its flexibility is that you can work in a big city. So you can work in Minneapolis or St. Paul as an engineer, or you can be in a smaller community. So like I live and work in Mankato. Um, you can go down to Rochester, Duluth. Um, or even smaller communities yet. Typical work hours as it's normal hours typically from 8 in the morning till 4.30 at night. Um, it's fairly flexible. Um, if you do work out in the construction field that's where you can have some of the longer days because you have to work with the construction folks. Um, as far as the salary is it really depends on the location so if you're in a bigger city you'll get usually paid a little bit more. Um, but generally speaking, starting salaries within that fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year within Minnesota. But as you grow in your career you learn more. Um, further into your career you can ultimately get over one hundred thousand dollars a year. Education wise it typically requires a four year degree in civil engineering, so a bachelor's degree. Um, you can get a master's degree or even further in your education, but four years is kind of the base for a civil engineer. Um, there's lots of math and science involved, so you got to be able to like that um, and kind of have that science-oriented background. But you also have to deal with the public and other entities, so you have to have the soft skills like presenting in front of people, um, being in meetings, or working with the public on a project that you have. So myself, I went to the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities for my, my education. Um, some other areas that have programs are NDSU, SDSU, um, and I believe uh, University of Minnesota Duluth also has a civil engineering program. So ultimately, you may ask, why did I become a civil engineer? Um, one of the big reasons is because my dad and brother, I'm the youngest of three kids, um, my dad and brother were both um, surveyors and surveyors work fairly closely with civil engineers, especially out in the construction 
Um, and so I kind of grew up with serving in civil engineering, and I really started to focus on that as I became into high school and ultimately college and decided that um, I like the variety of it. Um, I like the math and the science part of it, but also being able to work with the public. Um, so always being able to do something different. So ultimately, I chose civil engineering as a career path. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do here is to just talk briefly about one of the projects that I was involved with here the past couple of years. Um, so this project was constructed this past summer, the summer of 2020. Um, the project location here is in red, um, in southwest of Mankato between Jackson and Wyndham along Highway 71. And what I'd like to just point out briefly or discuss is how we designed and ultimately constructed the box culvert um, that's pointed out by this yellow pin here. So during kind of our scoping or early design part of the project, um, we went out and looked at this box culvert and realized that it's in pretty bad condition. Um, so ultimately decided that with this project, we're going to remove the old culvert and put in a new one. Um, so the first step we had to do was design that new culvert. Um, so how we do that is we, just from a really high level, is we figure out how much water is going to that culvert. So figure out the drainage area to this culvert and then using um, computer programs, hydraulic analysis programs, we're able to figure out what the size of that box culvert should be, what elevations should it be placed at, and where should it be placed. Um, so once we have it designed, the next step is to um, kind of put it into a plan set so that we can give this plan set to a contractor so that they can ultimately go out and build it. So what you're seeing here is just one of the pages from the plan set. It's just a stack of papers that we give the contractor. This plan set here is 106 pages, but this one page here shows overall kind of what we plan on doing for the project and where the, where the box culvert should go. So if I zoom in here just a second, you can see the box culvert is right through here. And then this is the roadway. Um, so we have a lot of times we'll have like text that gives the size of the box culvert and it just essentially gives information that the contractor needs to, to design or to go out and construct that box culvert. So the contractor will take this information, they'll go out and construct it. And so then this is what it looks like when they go out and construct it. So the first picture you're seeing here is this is the first piece of many for the box culvert. So it's a pretty large structure. Um, so in this instance, they're using a crane to put one piece down at a time. So the next picture here, this is that same piece. You can see that they're laying it down and connecting it with a different piece that has previously been laid. Um, so it's just interesting from a scale perspective. You can see two people here. It's taller than them, so we're talking pretty heavy and large structures. Um, so it's really fun just to kind of see this sort of stuff being put together. Um, this picture right here shows an inside view of the box culvert when it was constructed. So again, you can see each of the pieces are connected one by one until it's done. Um, and then this picture right here shows an outside view of it being once it's constructed and they, you know, they put sand around it and other materials to help with the drainage. And then finally, when they have it done, they cover it back up and put in the new roadway. So that just gives you a quick example of one of many um, areas of engineering that I deal with on a daily basis. So thank you for joining me today and listening about my career. This is a liquid asphalt that we use for making blacktop. As this is, right now, this is a solid form. I can 
dented hammer and just kind of stays in place. But if I uh, heat it up, so if I heat it up to a temperature of 270, 290, now it becomes liquid. And easy to pour. And this is what we used for um, putting a black top on the road to give it binder content to save the, to keep all the aggregates and stuff together. Alright, this is a puck that we do for our bit that we showed a little bit earlier. Um, this is one test we do. We get put in a gyrator, dry, gyrator and uh, Get these pucks then we weigh up the dry weight record it then we take it and put it under water for three to five minutes and then once it's done for the three to five minutes we'll take it out once we got that weight on it Do accessory dry weight and then weight it up again and do our calculations to figure out what we have for air voids. This is what our mix for blacktop comes into us in summer when we heat it up to uh, 230 degrees and put it in a pan, split out our different samples, rices, burns, and chemicals and pucks run our samples. We break these up to a uh, small size for the rice and then we burn the asphalt which is the black off of it and do our test on it. Okay so for braking cylinders they come in uh, 4x8 to uh, cylinders or a 6x12 depending on what you're doing. Um, you strip the mold the, to get the concrete cylinder out. Once you have it out, um, after 28 days sitting in the wet room, um, we're going to take it, put it in our molds, put it in, and jog it up so it hits My finger's in the way for a lot of it. And we're talking. And hit start, and then... Okay, this is a concrete strength test. See how strong the concrete is that goes out in the road. The strength is coming up to about it's at 35,000 psi pounds per feet. Uh, it's going to be coming up to 50,000 pounds per feet. That's the weight of one of our uh, haul trucks.
And we do this until she breaks. It usually gives a big pop. Some of these cylinders can go up to 110 to 130 thousand pounds per feet. So when it does that, it comes up to a pretty good bang. Now we do this down for concrete uh, curb, sidewalks, and um, even on for uh, streets that are paved. There's required strengths they have to meet. It's coming up to 80,000 pounds. That's the weight of a loaded semi truck, full semi truck. And that's it. It wasn't as big of a block I wanted to, but it works.